Welcome back designers. In today's tutorial, we're going to be taking a look at different tasks that you may expect to see on the Adobe Photoshop certification test. These are not going to be perfect matches to what you'll see on the test itself, but they are meant to familiarize yourself with different image editing and layer editing and typographic editing techniques you'll be asked to perform on the Adobe Photoshop certification test. So without further ado, let's get started. We're going to get started by zooming in on challenge one. So I'm using my zoom tool so I can zoom in on the artboard that says challenge one and then using my hand tool so I can pan over to it and see it in the middle. Challenge one says set the tracking of the drinks layer to match the tracking of the desserts layer. So as you guys can see with the desserts layer, there's quite a lot of space in between each of the letter forms and desserts whereas drinks has been totally unedited and all the letter forms are very close together. So the first thing we have to do is determine what the tracking is set to in desserts. To do so, I'm going to select the desserts layer and I'm going to be using my type tool so I can highlight the word desserts and then I'm going to open my character panel, which you guys can find by clicking right over here in the options bar or if you don't see it, you can go to Window and Character, whatever works for you. You can see that the tracking is set to 400 points. This icon right over here with the VA is basically your tracking, which sets the uniform space in between each character. So what I'm going to do to make drinks equal is I'm going to highlight the word with my type tool. In the character panel, I'm going to type in 400 points and press enter to save my changes. And this right here completes the task because you can see that now drinks is equal to desserts. Moving right along, you'll see the challenge two artboard is totally blank. There's no images, no text, nothing, because you're expected to create a brand new shape inside of this artboard. Challenge two says, create a rounded rectangle that has these characteristics. The width is 700 pixels, the height is 1,280 pixels, the corner radius is 40 pixels, the fill is white, the stroke is black and 5 pixels wide, and the alignment is centered. So I could theoretically use my vector shape tool over here, select my rectangle tool when I right click on my vector shape and drag one out, but the test is going to ask you to use very precise measurements. Accordingly, what I'm going to do is double click on my artboard and it's going to give me the ability to select a rectangle with the precise measurements that it's asking for. So the width I'm going to set to 700, the height I'm going to set to 1280 pixels, and it's asking for a corner radius of 40 pixels. So right over here, the radi or radi, however you pronounce it, I'm going to set it to 40. And because these are linked, all of these dimensions are linked, each of the corners is going to be set to 40 pixels. I'm going to click from center and I'm going to click OK and you'll see it would have created a perfect rectangle for me so I just have to basically center it. Now I have some more adjustments that I need to make. It's asking me to center this rectangle perfectly so I'm going to select where it says align horizontal centers then I'm going to select the rectangle tool again so that I can change the fill, which is asking for white, and the stroke, which is asking for black, with a pixel size of 5. And I'm going to press enter to save my changes. And that, my dear, will complete your challenge. Challenge 3 says, Copy the layer styles from the layer named Cookies and apply them to the layer named Yummy. So if we look at our artboard, you can see that the Cookies layer has three effects that are applied to it in order to give it this three-dimensional appearance. And the layer called Yummy has no effects. That's why it looks really flat. So all I have to do is right-click on the Cookies layer and I'm going to select the option that says Copy Layer Style. Then I'm going to go to the yummy layer, I'm going to right click on it, I'm going to select paste layer style, and you'll see that the exact same effects are now applied to this layer uniformly. 
Challenge 4 says, apply the MOS style preset to the text. This is something we haven't done yet in class. What I've taught you guys is how to use your FX panel so that you guys can apply things like drop shadows, strokes, and gradient overlays to different kind of layers. But there are preset styles that are already provided for in Photoshop. So now we just have to look for them. We're going to go to the Windows menu at the top of our workspace, and we're going to select the Styles panel. The Styles already include several different libraries that include a combination of different effects that you can apply to your layers with one click. If I select under Natural, there's going to be several different styles to make it look like natural textures. I'm going to select the one that says Moss. And you'll see that now the text that says always recycle has a three-dimensional appearance and it also kind of looks like grass. If I look in the layers panel, you'll see that that appearance was created using a bevel and emboss, inner shadow, inner glow, gradient pattern, and so forth. So a combination of different effects. The styles are really easy because you don't have to go and try to figure out what those effects were. You just click on the one that you want and presto. You're done. Challenge 5 will be familiar to you because we've used a version of this before when we were editing our destructive tools challenge. I'm going to select the woman layer in the challenge 5 artboard and what it's asking me to do is to remove the woman in the background using the content aware method. So it's basically trying to get me to get rid of the woman destructively. The first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to use tool number three, my lasso tool, so I can just make a selection of the woman. Technically, any selection tool will do. I don't need to be precise, I just need to get the majority of the woman. Then I'm going to go to the edit menu at the top of my workspace. I'm going to select fill, and under contents, I'm going to leave it at content aware, and I'm going to click OK. And in so doing, you'll see that the woman will seem like she was never there. If I look very closely, there's going to be a slight mark to prove that there was something there before, but for right now, as far as I'm concerned, you answered the prompt, so you're able to move on to the next challenge. Challenge 6 is also familiar because it's going to practice some destructive imaging tools that we tried before. It says, remove the creased areas in the image. So we could use basically any combination of destructive imaging tools, like our healing tools, our content aware, and so forth, to get rid of these creases. I'm going to focus primarily on the ones in the background because the ones in the actual image of the baby will be a little bit more challenging. On the test, you may have specific areas in the photograph where it's going to tell you to make corrections. But for now, this is just for practice. So I'm going to make sure I click on the layer that says creases. I'm going to go to tool number eight. And for the moment, I'm going to click my spot healing brush tool. And I'm just going to go and drag over the creases. And Photoshop is going to try to correct them as best as possible, make them look like they were never there by going and matching the textures and the color in the background of the image. If they're a little bit too stubborn, you could also try using the patch tool to make a selection of the bad areas and then you can kind of go and clone over the more decent areas in the image and get rid of those creases. Challenge 7 says, create a mask that non-destructively shows the puppy and hides the sky. So I have to make sure that I'm eliminating the sky behind the puppy image, but I'm doing so non-destructively using a layer mask. To make my life easier, I'm actually just going to go and make a selection of the puppy first before I apply the mask. In my layers panel, I'm going to make sure I click on the puppy layer. I'm going to use my quick selection tool, tool number four in my toolbar, and I'm going to click select subject first. And this is going to make an automatic selection of the puppy. Then, in the bottom of my layers panel, I'm going to click the icon that looks like a camera. And this will create an automatic mask that you guys can see here next to the puppy image in Challenge 7, which will have automatically eliminated most of the sky behind the image. Challenge 8 is easy because there's no actual editing that you need to do. All you have to do is hide some layers. 
Challenge 8 says, hide all the layers on the canvas except the shape layers. So if we look at the artboard that says Challenge 8, you'll see that we have two text layers, one which says wild and the other one says African mammals. Then we have two shape layers, the elephant and the camel. So in order to answer the question correctly, all you have to do is click the little icon next to wild and the little icon next to African mammals. When it's asking you to hide the layers, it doesn't mean to delete them. It just means to make them invisible for a temporary basis. That's why we're clicking the little eyeball next to them. Challenge 9 says, non-destructively convert the photo to black and white, leave the logo and the text in color. The question is asking me to convert the image to black and white. I know if I use my adjustments panel, if you don't see it in your workspace, you can go to Window and Adjustments. There's an adjustment called black and white. Because I used it non-destructively, you'll see this black and white adjustment shows up as a separate layer on top of the background. So that if I were to change my mind, I could literally go and turn off the visibility. But the question is saying for us to non-destructively convert the image to black and white, which we did, and leave the logo and the recycling text completely in color. All you have to do is make sure that you guys are applying the adjustment onto the background layer only, and you leave the other two layers unaffected. Finally, we have challenge 10. The wording is a little bit weird, so pay close attention. It says, combine the ungrouped layers into a group named desserts. This group should be placed immediately above the background group in the stacking order. So if we look at challenge 10, we have a group called background. Then right underneath it, we have a text layer called desserts that is not visible right now, and an image layer just called layer five, which again is also not visible. So it's asking me to combine the ungrouped layers into one group. To do so, I'm going to hold down Shift on my keyboard. You can also hold down Command or Control on a PC. And I'm going to select both of these layers. Then I can either use this little file folder icon at the bottom of my Layers panel, or I can hit Control G or Command G on a Mac. Either way, they'll both have been grouped into one concise layer called Group 1. It's asking me to double click on the name and call it desserts, but I'm not quite done. It says, this group, the one we just created, should be placed immediately above the background in the stacking order. That means that I need to select the group called desserts and drag it up above background, which is now gonna make it visible and we're actually gonna see what's there. Well, my friends, I sincerely hope that was helpful to you and it gave you a good idea of what you might expect to see on the Adobe Photoshop certification test. You guys are going to save your work by going to File, Export. You're going to select the option that says Artboards to PDF. You're going to click Browse and select your flash drive as your destination because I do not have a flash drive plugged in. I'm selecting my desktop. You guys are going to call it Finished. 2020 template and you guys are going to make sure that it says multi-page document right over here on the options and you guys are going to click run. As you know anytime we're exporting a multi-page PDF Photoshop is going to start blinking and that just means that it's processing our request to take all the information in the artboards and condense it to one file. Once you guys get the message that says artboards the PDF was successful you guys are going to go and upload your final draft to Schoology, and we're going to call it a day. Thanks for watching. Can't wait to see your work. Peace out.